So uh, there is there's just this horrible story uh, which has been going around for a while about Sarah Moulds, a woman who uh, was a teacher. She owns a pony, she still owns the pony, called Bruce, who she was videoed striking in November 2021. It's a protected animal, a pony called uh, Bruce Almighty. Uh, she was, uh, after the film, she was cleared of causing a protected animal unnecessary suffering. I'm not entirely sure why, to be honest. Um, I just want to have a look. Uh, now, if you've got kids in the room, you might not want them to see this, just to be aware of this if you're watching on Talk TV. Um, but there is a video of what um, Sarah Mills did to this horse, and I want to show a little bit of it now. So uh, just to warn you, you might find this distressing, but it's important for the argument, and that's why we've decided to show it. So let's have a look at this. Can we play the video? I'm sorry, we can't. We actually can't play the uh, video at the moment. We've got a got a technical issue, but I think a lot of people have seen it. They've perhaps seen it around uh, social media and so on. And uh, Sarah Moulds was filmed kicking and slapping a horse, uh, but she was found not guilty of causing unnecessary suffering to a protected animal. I find this pretty astonishing. Let's talk to Dominic Dyer now. He's an animal welfare campaigner and writer. Uh, Dominic, you're very welcome to Talk TV. How are you today? Good to see you, Peter. Thank you very much. I'm well, fine. What, what do you make of this? I mean, I, I just find it astonishing. She has been found not guilty. We have seen, sadly, not on Talk TV because we can't just do it at the moment because of a technical issue, but we're trying um, to sort that out. We'll try and show it before 12 o'clock if we can. But what appeared to me to be very, very clear and straightforward case of animal cruelty. What do you make of it? What do you make of this affair? Well, you know, there's no doubt in anyone's mind, you can see the video footage that was taken by the Hunt Sabs and, you know, provided to the RSPCA to mount this prosecution on very good grounds that she's been kicking, slapping and punching the horse. You know, the horse didn't walk into her fist, the horse didn't walk into her foot. You know, she was acting in a way which was aggressive and cruel to an animal. Now, we have laws in this country against such cruelty, and they have been enhanced and strengthened. Give credit to this government for doing something in this area of the last few years, and you can go to prison for up to five years for this type of behaviour towards animals, horses, dogs, cats, and it's a serious offence and should be treated as such. Um, clearly, it angered a lot of people on social media, and it exploded on social media. When I posted it, you know, millions of people were there's, sharing there's this. A, uh, just to explain how this made it onto social media, there was a hunt saboteur uh, who filmed um, Sarah Moulds kicking the horse in the chest, slapping him four times in the face before returning him to a horse box. Exactly. And her argument in, in court, and she brought an expert witness in, was to say I was trying to control the horse and get it into the box, and the video was taken out of context. Now, if I didn't control the horse in this way, it could have been a danger because it could have got onto the highway. Is, is, it, is it possible that her argument... I mean, let's just... Uh, we have a couple of minutes, so let's just, let's just air this. Is it possible that that argument was correct, Dominic? No, because I think you've got to look at the broader picture of the behaviour pattern of people involved in the hunts. This is the Cottesmore hunt, a notorious hunt, one of many that are up and down the country pushing the, the boundaries of the law, if that's the word I can use, every single weekend when it comes to the Hunting Act. They're out trail hunting, which is a smokescreen for illegal hunting. They are hunting down foxes and killing them illegally. They have terrier men with them on quad bikes, for the sole purpose of those terrier men with those terriers in little boxes is to put them down badger sets to get the foxes out of the set so they can get the hounds against them to rip them apart. And also they kill badgers, which is illegal under the Badger Protection Act as well. This is disgusting wildlife crime. We have lobbied the government over this period of this parliament and previous parliaments to say this shouldn't happen, this should be dealt with, you should tighten the law, and they refuse to do anything about it. And I'm afraid people like Sarah that are involved in these hunts don't, in my view, show any significant concern for the care of the horses that they have. And I think that was shown very clearly in Sarah's behaviour towards this horse. The hounds are treated disgustingly. You know, the fed raw meat, they don't get veterinary intervention when they get injuries. And you can imagine they get terrible injuries going through fences and things. They are shot with bolt guns when they're no value anymore. They're not handed over to anyone to be retired. It's a miserable existence. And not only that, the hounds go all the way over the roads over railway lines, which are real danger to people. They go into people's homes and they kill their pets. We've had numerous cases of that. 
You know, I'm speaking to a major police conference in Hertfordshire with the Chief Constable on Monday at Nebworth House, and I'll be talking about the need to tackle this wildlife crime in the countryside, and, and the police accept that. So I think my view on this Sarah Mould's case is it's the wider context of the disgraceful behaviour of the hunts that she's actively involved with. And what she said was, well, listen, I've been you know, demonised on social media. I don't condone any of the threats against her. That's just not acceptable in my view. But that doesn't take away from her behaviour and conduct on the day all the conduct of the hunts that she's directly involved with. I think that's the problem. Dominic, we're, we're, we're in a situation now where we can, uh, we, we, we discuss this, discuss this properly. We've actually been, uh, there are a number of people who say absolutely disgusting, she should have been punished. Anne says, so glad you've raised this issue because I couldn't understand the not guilty verdict. Uh, one person saying, come on, Peter, you are better than this. She was found not guilty by a court, so now you want to find her guilty through the media. This is not trial by media. This is not conviction by media. We're discussing this issue. And now I think uh, the technical issue has been solved. We can yeah. watch the video. Just to be clear, uh, if you've got children in the room, you might not want them to see it. You may not want to watch it yourself. For, for the, ne the next, uh, uh, how long is the video? 20, it's about 20 seconds, I'm going to describe it for people who are listening on uh, talk, uh, talk radio rather than watching on talk TV. So we're going to play the video now, we can see it. There she is, doing what I described, slapping, punching the, uh, the animal, putting it back in the horse box there. Um, yeah, there are a couple of people with her there as well, that's Sarah Moulds. And yeah, that's the video there. So um, people will have perhaps seen that on Talk TV. Many people have seen it on social media as well. It's very quick, isn't it, Dominic? Um, it is quick. And as she would say, and I, I said earlier on that, you know, it was taken out of context. You didn't see the whole situation. She says the horse is well kept. And if the RSPCA had come and looked at the horse, they would find it's well kept. The fact of the matter is this, though. In that moment of time, mm. she was savagely beating that horse and kicking it. And that's a criminal offence. Now, the jury didn't find her guilty. She brought expert witnesses in. She, I think, played up the you know the, the demonization on social media saying it was like a trial by social media there could well have been sympathy for that and some of the threats that she had received which i don't condone and do not in any way support no i can uh, completely also, agree we, can, we but ultimately we still have a, we still have cruelty yeah. to an animal and it sets a very dangerous precedent if we have new laws like this if juries are clearing people where there is clearly such a case of what is in my view a criminal act towards an animal because of the cruelty that's you know that's taking place but she's been cleared so that's the legal process but that's not the end of the matter we should keep talking about why it is that people that do this type of thing should be held to account in the justice system and we need to deal with these hunts to be quite frank if there were no fox hunts out there that day peter that horse wouldn't have been beaten it wouldn't have been in that situation where she said she was fearing for getting it back in the wagon let, let's let you know that would be the, the ultimate solution in my view. Let me just read you what the RSPCA has said. Uh, they were the ones who prosecuted Sarah Moles. Uh, we are brought the prosecution. We do not take the decision to bring prosecutions lightly. We apply the same tests as the Crown Prosecution Service to decide whether to prosecute someone for animal welfare offences. This requires there to be sufficient evidence for a realistic prospect of conviction for it to be in the public interest to prosecute. The RSPCA continued this case was reviewed by a prosecution case manager, an independent solicitor, and a barrister who all agreed that the evidential test was met and with the support of two expert vets. We accept the court's decision today and thank the jury for their careful consideration, but the public can be assured that the RSPCA will always look into concerns that are raised to us about animal neglect and cruelty. That's what the RSPCA said. Um, you know, Sarah Moulds is not guilty here, Dominic. Um, and we, you know, the High Court has found her not guilty. We need to be very clear about that. We also need to be very clear, as you have on a couple of occasions, Dominic, that any threats or uh, actions towards her that in this regard should not should not happen. But what kind of message, just finally, do you think this sends that she wasn't convicted? I think it sends the wrong message. I think in the in the court of public opinion, she's been found guilty. In the legal system, she has not. It, there are various technical discussions that would have gone in that courtroom that aided her case. I've no question of that. But ultimately, I feel, and millions of other people feel, that she acted irresponsibly and cruelly towards that animal. What we must see is that the RSPCA continues to take cases like this, and I credit them for all their hard work in doing it. And we shouldn't see a situation arise where video footage like this emerging on social media is no longer seen as good evidence in court, because it is evidence, and it truly shows what actually happened. And we must continue to scrutinise and monitor what's going on with these hunts, Day in, day out, as I've said, there are major issues around animal welfare for the horses. 
and also obviously the cruelty to foxes and wildlife that are involved in this process and the cruelty to the hounds as well. I would personally like to stop all fox hunting. I want horses not to be put in this situation. No foxes killed, no wildlife killed, no dangers to the public of hounds crossing the roads and railways. I don't think anyone should be doing this anymore and they shouldn't be wasting police time on it either. Thank you, Dominic. Thanks very much indeed. Dominic Dyer there, uh, well, animal welfare campaigner and writer. So thank you for that. We also have the statement from the RSPCA. Uh, Vic has been in touch and says, Peter, if you've ever been around horses, they can be stubborn. And how many of you have been kicked by a horse for no reason at all? Um, I certainly have been around horses a little bit. I used to go horse riding as a kid, uh, just for about a year or so. Um, I loved horses. I thought they were lovely animals, but yeah, they can be stubborn, but I just, I wouldn't ever think, it wouldn't it wouldn't occur to me to strike a horse. Um, Leighton says, if she can't control a horse without violence, she shouldn't be allowed to own one. Um, and Joe in Belfast says, hi, uh, again, Peter, great seeing you during the week. Uh, thanks, Joe. Yeah, I was here on Monday. Uh, as a total animal freak, I can be boring about animal rights and welfare. Cruelty is just beyond any excuse. It was her own horse, that terrible woman. She never received a prison term and never allowed any animal, near any, any animal again. Well, Joe, she was uh, found not guilty. Uh, Sarah Moulds is not guilty, but a lot of people still very, very annoyed about that. We're going to talk in just a few minutes about Ukraine and the latest there.